So now that we are wrapping up uh, this third section of our book, the Opus 3 section, and also wrapping up the semester, uh, this video is going to kind of be a bit of a recap for some of the topics we've talked about lately and walking you through a few of the pieces on page 32 here uh, that sort of wrap up and use all the skills we've been talking about. So for violins and violas, some of the things we've covered lately have been the high third finger. So this finger pattern where we have a whole step between one and two, whole step between two and three, and then if we're using the fourth finger, the third and fourth are right next to each other. We're able to use that finger pattern to play our low A major scale. <laughs> third fingers on the D and the G strings. The other things we've been talking about mostly have to do with the bow. Uh, we had the tenuto and staccato bow articulations, so the tenuto bowing being a little smoother, just a little bit of separation between the notes, a little emphasis on the beginning of the note. And then the staccato being a much crisper articulation and a really clear start and stop to each note and making sure what you can hear a difference between and the two styles of notes. Uh, we also covered the rhythm of the dotted eighth note and sixteenth note, this rhythm. scale, for example, uh, and this came into play in some of our pieces, we played it with smooth slurs, as well as hook bowings. So now I'll walk through the few of the pieces on page 32 that kind of use a lot of these skills all together. The first one is number 3.42, the Nixon Bowl March. This one uses the high third finger as well as some of our different bow articulations. We have staccato. Uh, Tunido is not marked, but we do have notes with no bow articulation marked, so that kind of implies a smoother bow stroke as well as some accents. Uh, so just to recap, the staccato note, you want to have a nice short note. You're going to start the bow and then physically stop the bow from moving instead of just letting it run its course. For the accents, you're going to want to use a little bit more bow weight by leaning in on your index finger to emphasize the beginning of each of the accented notes. So here is the Nixon Bowl March. I'll play it through with a repeat. some of the differences in the bow articulations here. Uh, in terms of bow placement, this one does have some dynamic changes, so we do want to be aware of where we're starting the bow. For the mezzo forte at the beginning, I would recommend around the middle of the bow, just for a nice, easy back and forth. the G-string notes uh, for violins, it's going to be the highest level, so making sure that your elbow is helping to support for violas, it's in the middle on that second to lowest string. Uh, we get to the first ending on the forte accent, we're going to want to get to the frog, and then to make that accent really engage the index finger on our bow, pulling a little extra extra oomph to that, extra speed and weight. And then same thing on the next note, this time starting on the up bow, really engaging our index finger on the up bow, with the index finger. For all of those accents. In the second ending, they throw in that one staccato note. So you'll want to 
want to make sure that one sounds slightly shorter than the accented note surrounding it. And to do that, I just stop that note a little bit sooner with the bow, so not quite as much bow for that one compared to the accented notes. So you can hear a bit of a difference there, hopefully. So that is 3.42, the Mixing Bowl March. And then the second one we'll go over is 3.43, harmonic. This kind of is a good callback to the beginning of the year when we talked about some harmonics and sort of preparing for some shifting for violin and viola, getting used to the feeling of moving our hand around as we're playing and before long we'll be playing in third positions and all of the high positions up here. So we want to just get used to the feeling of not being locked back here in first position but be able to move freely and be able to move while moving the bow, which is a bit of a rubbing your belly while patting your head kind of challenge. So I'll play through our harmonic first and then discuss a couple of ways you can practice getting the harmonic notes. chance to get to the harmonic note with the open string before each harmonic. So in the second measure you're playing open D, gives you a chance to move your hand as you're playing that. So you can just kind of practice this motion of bowing and moving your left hand at the same time and using your fourth finger, maybe third if it's more comfortable, but most people like to use your fourth finger for harmonics and finding that spot on the D string where you're matching the sound of the D on the A string, octave above the open D. Remember, it's very light finger pressure. Your finger is not even weighing down on the string. It's just touching so that it changes the frequencies excuse me, of the string. With the bow, you're going to want to use much less bow weight, really light, fast bow to get the harmonic to speak. Uh, in measure two, where you're playing the harmonics, I would recommend staying up in this kind of third, fourth position area where you're playing the harmonics. So you have the open D to start, harmonic D, and then you can just lift your finger up, stay up here, and play the open A. And then harmonic A is in the same spot, just on the A string. So you can stay up there for that whole measure. And then go back down for measure three. Travel up one more time for the last note. So harmonics can be a really good way of practice getting around the instrument. Especially for viola, you have slightly larger upper bouts to contend with, or if you're a violinist with smaller hands, uh, just getting used to the feeling of being able to travel freely on your fingerboard. It's also going to involve feeling really secure and holding the instrument. So just check in with how your violin or viola feels on your shoulder, making sure that your head is helping hold it up. There we have it. There is Opus 3. Um, the last couple pieces in this section are sort of orchestra pieces. Uh, if anyone's interested, I'm happy to play through the part. You're welcome to read through some of these, uh, but obviously it's hard to do as an orchestra with all of us in our separate places. So let me know if you have any questions or if you want me to record any of that, and I'll be back next week with one more video for you all. Thank you.